Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here, and welcome to my cozy, <laughs> my mother's living room. <laughs> okay, the weather was coming. You saw that. If you're anywhere in the path, you wanted to get out of there, and I didn't want to miss you today. So I got up early, hopped on my reindeer, <laughs> hopped on the back of Santa's sleigh because I needed to get here quickly, and here we are. So I'm so excited to see you. So say hi, say where you're from. This is going to be kind of a surprise. We're live streaming on Brother Sewing and Crafting Channel. And you know, since I couldn't really teach you a lesson today, although my mom has a great sewing machine and there are a lot of projects around here, I thought, let's go back. Yesterday on my live show, we did Blast from the Past. And it was so much fun seeing some of the things we've done in the past. Well, we've been live streaming here on Brother for... Oh my goodness, quite a few years now. Actually, I think since March of 2020. Does that ring a bell? Yeah. <laughs> right when COVID hit, we had to find something to do, right? So I see you all rolling in. Yesterday, I mentioned that there might not be a live show, but I couldn't resist. Besides, what else are we going to do when it's snowing out? So those of you in the bad weather, it just started snowing here. It's beautiful. I wish you could see it. And the only thing that my mom's missing here is like, a fake fireplace. Well, she has a real one, <laughs> but I don't know how to light it. So next time I'll have to make sure I learn how to turn her TV on so we can get our phone. I feel like, um, wasn't there a show on Sundays like that? <laughs> so welcome everyone. Say hi. So I picked out a couple of fantastic episodes for you. So we've had great educators on here, great brand ambassadors teaching you uh, tips and tricks for last minute gift ideas. Well, you're kind of down to the crunch now. Uh, actually, you're really down to the crunch if you're doing it for Christmas. If you're doing it for New Year's, you have a whole nother week. And if you're waiting till Valentine's, <laughs> no problem at all. So let me see if you remember this episode. And while we're doing that, don't forget, I really am live and I can see all of your comments and questions. So as we're watching, feel free to drop those in too, because I would love to hear from you. Okay, so let me bring this up and see if you remember this one. The whole batch. All right, hold on. I got to remember what page to go to. <laughs> I'm on one screen today. I'm going back in time. Got a ugly sweater update. We've got your recipe of the day from Kathy. And then we have four fabulous Scan and Cut projects for you that you are not going to want to miss. That could be easy, fast gifts or presents or maybe something for yourself. So, and we even have a guest visitor today. Uh, let's see if I can just uh, share our guest visitor here. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> our guest visitor. <laughs> so, Cindy. Uh, thank you for this beautiful uh, gift of ours. Um, I'll make sure the ring doorbell goes off. Oh, sorry. No affiliation to brother, but I'll make sure my ring doorbell goes off so all of your dogs can bark as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Angela. <laughs> all right. So, Cindy, uh, you are first up on the Richter scale today. How is your Christmas project coming? Well, since... Um Rain kind of shamed me into making Princess. She, princess was feeling a little bit left out when Rain posted the picture. Oh my gosh. I'm seriously, I did not just ring that. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> the UPS guy. <laughs> right on he, you. He's here to bring you the dog. Oh no, it's <laughs> Win. He wants to see the dog. <laughs> That's too um, funny. So yeah, um, Rain kind of shamed me into making Lily, in, from Lily's to making Princess one. So that's where I've started. <laughs> princess got the ugly sweater first. So this is the beginnings of it. It needs to be a little bit smaller. So we're going to take it up a little bit, but we also have to make it a little bit more over the top. So. <laughs> okay, so Marianne said her dog would eat it off. <laughs> <That's even funnier. laughs> Mine will not. She will wear it, actually. She will be perfectly content. She, for some reason, she does like wearing sweatshirts and jerseys. I don't know. Oh, she, that's um, funny. She's so a, you have, a team supporter. I need some of that boa, by the way. Well, you know, I would send it to you here, but it won't <laughs> quite make it there. So she is about to get some additions to hers. She needs them. Every girl needs a fur collar. So she's getting her, her fur collar. And she's going to get some additional buttons in multiple colors. 
and we're just going to kind of toss them around. But it, we've had fun with it. And she actually, it's pretty cute on her. <laughs> so that, she gets hers first. It's super, super cute. And then I will um, actually start on mine. I've got it over here ready to start, but you know how that goes. It has well, a I have um, glamour. So for mine, what I'm working on so far because of inspiration, I win with the inspiration of this. Um, now I'm going to, because of yesterday's show, I'm going to cut apart the shirt. I'm going to do it on tomorrow's show and add buttonholes all the way around the neckline. And that's why I need your boa so I can like filter it in and out of the buttonholes. I'm going to be an elf. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. Do you all remember that shirt? I embarrassingly still have it and cindy if you're watching this i know you're laughing because this was the ugly sweater challenge that i definitely failed at <laughs> i needed some of that boa which i have now and i found that shirt i had buttonholes everywhere i just didn't finish so we'll watch everybody else's on here so just in case you're wondering i would love to know what's in your ufo projects that would be unfinished objects or unfinished projects because that one's still in mine, but it was still a good idea. It really was still a good idea. Do you remember this episode? There were such fun things. So let's check it out. <laughs> I still haven't decided what to do to mine. That's what, that's what I'm having a hard time with. My dog looks at me just like, like she just took his food. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kathy, you're pretty dressed up by the way. Are you, uh, but you're not wearing an ugly sweater. That's a pretty cute top, actually. <laughs> Thank you. I borrowed it from my mom. It's really cute. And your ears? It's a Florida <laughs> Christmas, and I've got my antlers on. And uh, by the way, <laughs> in case Cindy has to run, we have to say hi to her because she was popping in just to give us our update on our Christmas. But Cindy, hopefully you'll still be here for a few minutes. <laughs> in the meantime, we'll just enjoy your dog. <laughs> Princess. All right, Kathy, what's your recipe of the day today? Okay. I, I know you can't see it real well because I don't have it on close up, but this basket is actually stitched with the um, recipe of the day. So I'm going to switch my camera over right. to the machine camera. Okay, she's going to go to her camera, and if it's fuzzy at all today, don't worry. It's just because there's so many people on the internet. But if you listen to the steps that she gives you, it's like listening to the recipe without reading the book. How's that? <laughs> so for anybody who hasn't seen this, are you out of here, Cindy? I'm going to say goodbye. You all have a blast. I've got other things Bye, I've got to get done today. So thanks See for you listening. See you later. later. Y'all have fun. Bye. All right, so for those that have missed this, uh, the recipe that she's doing is anything that can be done, it's in my design center. So if you've missed these last episodes, you can go back and watch them. But she's ready on the machine. Let's bring her in. All right. Okay. We can see you great today. Well, yesterday, my neighbors were still at home um, quarantining. So they've all gone back to work now. So maybe my internet speed is a little better. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> So I apologize for yesterday, but we're going to start out in my design center and I'm going to go to my pattern fills, go to the decorative fills and select decorative fill number 016 and touch OK. Touch OK again. And this time I'm just going to use my flood fill bucket and touch the whole screen. So I've got the whole screen filled. I'm going to go to next to set my stitch properties. But I'm just leaving everything at the default. And I will touch set. Go to OK because I'm ready to convert it to embroidery. And now I want to add an additional decorative fill. So I'm going to touch add. I'm going to go back into my design center. And then I'm going to come up here to where my decorative fills are at. This time I'm going to choose a different color. And we're going to scroll all the way down to number 42. That was one that came with the latest um, upgrade, upgrade number two. I'm going to touch OK. OK again. 
again, touch my flood fill bucket and touch my screen. We'll go to next. I'm going to leave my stitch preferences at the default and touch set and then OK because I want it to convert it to an embroidery pattern. And it is on my screen. So let's see if I can get this. Don't spill the pot. <laughs> <laughs> you get points that's that out. Oh my cute. gosh, that's wow. gorgeous. Wow. That's, that's a really cute. Pot. Gorgeous. Oh, I love that. That and is so, so unique. Beautiful. This was a um, one of the fonts that's built in, the calligraphy font. And I just made a custom stamp out of it. And then I added the two different decorative fills. And so this is another little quick and easy Christmas gift, too, to just make these little decorative baskets. Mm, that's a great idea. Yeah. Super Very cute. Cool. These recipes, you're going to need a whole little book of these. These are fantastic. Well, thank you. All right, Kathy, we'll wait till you come back on screen. We'll see you just in one second. Well, hi, Colleen. How are oh. you? <laughs> so, by the way, do you remember all of these recipes that she put together? So, this was from episode, I believe, 128. So, if you want to go back and watch all of her recipes, I don't, how many did Kathy give us? A ton, a ton. I can't even remember how many. So, if you go on Brother's YouTube channel, and you have to click on, it'll have videos, and then go to the live videos, scroll down, because this is a long time ago, <laughs> uh, but it's still very relevant. Uh, she actually, you could binge watch. If you're gonna get snowed in, why not, right? I just texted my mother and asked her how to get a fake fire on her TV. So I'll keep you posted on that. By the way, that was not my doorbell. That was in the past, <laughs> but I will warn you that there's a very loud clock here that will go off Oh, probably in about five minutes. So <laughs> everybody's dog will be barking on that. So, all right, let's go back and see what else the girls had. This was such a fun episode. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to bring Kathy up one more time. Hey, Kathy. Hey. That was fantastic. And you have a whole group of people following you for your little recipes. So each day you guys can go back and watch these videos, uh, download them to your Facebook page or go back to YouTube and see them. And uh, these are just fantastic. I can hardly wait till tomorrow's. <laughs> <laughs> Great fills. By the way, that uh, that letter that you put on the plant, was that uh, uh, an applique or did you embroider it on there? And it's embroidered on. It's one of the calligraphy fonts that's built into my luminaire. It looks really cool. Mm -hmm. I know somebody's going to ask that, so that's why I just thought I'd just ask for you. <laughs> it, was, it was also embroidered with um, Brothers Metallic Thread, which works wonderful in our machines. We love Metallic Thread. Awesome. All right. So, Colleen. All right. I have a quick question for all of you. Uh, just a quick one. How many of you have been using the metallic thread over the holidays while you're making, maybe have you checked out the Art Spira app lately, by the way? I brought this because I'm going to finish it here. Do you remember? They kind of showed a different version of this, but I did a little, I copied along. I did the tree skirt. Uh, this was built into the app and I had a great idea. So I'll, I'll stay tuned, but I'm going to go over to my sister's house and she's got a scan and cut. And because this came off the art sphere up, I'm going to see if they have a Christmas tree like this that I can send to the scan and cut. And I'm going to cut out little Christmas trees out of felt. And then I'm going to cut out little smaller versions of the Christmas tree out of cardstock paper, put a hole in them. And that's how I'm going to wrap my gifts. Something fun, easy, I could probably do, I don't know, even on just the 12 by 12 mat, I could probably cut at least a dozen of these. So that's gonna be super quick and easy. I love that. So the Art Spear app, don't forget about that. All right, so there's more, there's more. Let's see what Colleen has to say. Uh, she's got a great project for us as well. And uh, this is so much fun. And I, I just heard the ring doorbell. <laughs> 
Hi. No pressure at all, but I'm going to bring you up here and you, everybody's saying this is so much fun, so much inspiration for getting ready after the end of 2020. We're going to have so many things that we can work on for the next few weeks. This is going to be great. And you have something very fun. I have something that I think is fun. I made it for me because it was something that I needed, but I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to move to a little bit different view so that you'll be able to see the project, I think. Oh, we can see great. Mm -hmm. Can you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Okay, so this is my project. It's a tiny little thing. It's because I can't see it on my screen. So that's. You we can, can see, see the scan and cut screen. Okay, you can't see the project, though. And I don't understand why not. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go to this camera because I was fine a minute ago. I'm going to go here and show you this. Oh, so cute. It's a That's tiny cool. little thing. It's about two and a half by two. And it fits on your uh, key ring. So you can just hang it on your key ring. And then I, of course, customized mine because I wanted it to know everybody to know it was mine. And these letters were done on scan and cut and then welded so they would be one piece. So they would stay mm -hmm. in place better. And then this is just a little snap pouch. So you can put whatever treasure you want to put inside of it and snap it together and and throw it on your key ring so i made That's the little so one cute. that was fun and then i said well what if i wanted the bigger one so <laughs> i made a bigger one so once you have the idea in your head it's an easy way to go so the way i got started the way i start is i don't want to waste cutting uh so i just start with paper and i cut a piece of paper about the size i think i'm going to need and then i just fold it and trim it until i get what i want and then I will take it, uh, you could of course just put it on your mat and scan it, and then you would be able to use it with direct cut uh, on the scan and cut. But I, I, because I'm a little sloppy in my cutting, I will take it into either canvas workspace uh, and draw it there so it's precise, uh, and then send it to the machine, or I will take it into my PE Design 11, which is brother software that I could not live without. Uh, very, very precise and accurate. So that's how I draw typically. And now let's go to the machine screen, the, the screen which I hope you get to see. That we can see. Yeah, I'm gonna this it down. I got it perfect, we got it just right. We got it just right, but it's not showing you that I'm touching it. No, nope. no, nope. it's frozen. Well, isn't that special? <laughs> <laughs> It is only because we're awesome. <laughs> Okay, let's try this screen. Okay. Okay, so can you see that? Yes. yes. So if I bring out my mat and put it in, you can see that part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, isn't that fun? So let's. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Well, I just was checking the camera. Now let's see. Let's go back to this other one and see if it's decided to behave. Let's just see if it's going to behave, and it is not. No. Okay. How rude of you, because it's a perfect <laughs> camera. <laughs> I Except have, you know, know. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Some of these older episodes are hilarious, but you know what's interesting is when it comes to the live shows, some things don't change. The internet goes out. The camera freezes. The camera falls off. We've had cameras fall off. We... I wish through all of these years I had kept a bloopers, especially from behind the scenes before we went live. Oh my gosh, there were some hilarious ones. So by the way, I just saw, uh, was it Patty that said, her husband said to put, to cut out letters on the scan and cut and put them on gifts to remind. So Patty, I've got a cute story for you. Uh, we actually, my mom used, my mom and dad used to put numbers on our presents when we were young. So I'm the oldest of five kids and we would kind of sneak around. We wanted to peek what's in the package. And I guess that means we were bad kids. <laughs> so they would put numbers on them. So we would not know who they were for. So we wouldn't go looking then, which was true. But one year, and mom, if you're watching, I know you're laughing. <laughs> okay, she's out shopping, by the way, in case you're wondering, why am I at my mother's house and she's not here? So uh, she lost the notebook with the numbers. So nobody knew whose gift was what. So I'd be opening one and be like, no, that's for your brother. No, that's for your sister. It gave an entire awesome day <laughs> of crafting. So 
Anyways, I'm going to bring you over here to Emily. You got to see what Emily had to do. Just to give you a little laugh, I would love to hear a few in the comments. I'm reading these as we're watching these old episodes. If you have a great story that happened in your house in the past or maybe already this year, I'd love to read it. It's so fun to see what happens every, everywhere else. All right, let's see what Emily had for us. Leather it. or vinyl. And then on the inside, it has a little pocket and some card holders because who doesn't like cards <laughs> my kids are always asking for old cards so this would make a great stocking stuffer or just a little gift if you need something for um, a neighbor kid or someone that you know it's a simple project um, so I'm just gonna walk a little bit through how I assembled this so let me tip this down a little bit so you can see here I've got some parts of this and I've already done some pre-assembly so here is the fake like vinyl leather or whatever you want to make it out of you could do real leather for sure but um i like sewing with the fake stuff because it's super easy um and i've already put one snap on this side and then i've got a little flap with a snap on this side so that we will be able to close it okay so you make an outer and then we have to assemble our inner so for the inner we've made a backing and this actually will go on our outer and then I leave the top open for like a money flap. Um, but on there, we're going to assemble first the coin pocket. So I've got a little pocket pouch. And if you're looking for more information, you can go to lifestosavory.com and search wallets and this will pop right up and it gives you all the dimensions and everything that you need in order to make this if you're interested in replicating it. Um, and then I have a little, the pocket flap, which is just, you know, fabric folded, sewn, and turned right side out. So we're going to just attach it in a couple of places on the fabric, and we're going to stitch it real quick to our outer so that we can then stitch this to, well, I guess this is more the inner, to the outer piece. And then for the, for the card flaps, I just take a strip of fabric. And I didn't even finish the edges because I'm just going to zigzag down the side. But you could, if you wanted it to be even neater, you could finish the edges of the fabric. So I put the top finished edge along the top of my fabric. And then I take this library card and stick it in here so that when I make my folds on the fabric, I can make sure that the card will fit in there. And so I just use the card to help me create a couple of folds along there. And then you're gonna to wanna to pin or clip. I need to grab the pins up here. Um, pin or clip in a couple places. That's super cute. So that we can sew them. And then I like to attach this card holder with, like I said, a zigzag, so they don't have to pre-finish the edges. And so we're just going to right now zigzag that on and then we'll stitch the coin flap or the coin pocket on and then we'll stick it on here real quick and you'll get to see um, how easy it is to put together. This is such a cute, fun project. So you, you know, make sure that your stitches are pretty close together because I'm not only using this to stitch, but I am also using this to finish the edge of the fabric. So you do wanna make sure that your stitches are pretty close together so you don't have a lot of fraying. And that's also one thing I think about when I'm choosing the type of fake vinyl or leather is choosing something that doesn't fray because even with faux leathers or vinyls, some of them seem to fray more than others. They're not all completely um, fray proof. So if you don't want to cut off strings as time goes on, you can think about that and try to choose one that when you cut it, because I do leave the edges raw just to keep it super simple. Um, so I'll trim a couple of these little... <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Arnell, I'm cracking up. So in your original... In the original show, you left that comment. What did you write? Hey, Emily, but right before that, you said, what a great project. Now you said cute last minute project. I guess things haven't changed much. <laughs> That's fantastic.
fantastic. Okay, I love it. <laughs> All right. And it looks did, like. Uh, did Emily freeze or, is it just, or did I freeze? <laughs> I think it's Emily. You're I think not it's frozen. Emily. <laughs> oh, it must have been some good weather that day, right? Because I'm not freezing. I'm here. I'm still trying to figure out how to get a fireplace on my TV. <laughs> All right. Let's skip ahead. I've got a few more for you as well. Let's see if I can get over here. I think everyone had a few little issues that time, but we did have a couple fun scan and cut ones. But I do have, you can go back to that episode, by the way. Just go on YouTube on Brother Sews and search 128, okay? But I have more. I have more to share with you. I've got a few more. So you, uh, we'll leave that one away for right now because I, I just remember later on it got worse as far as the technology. So let me just bring in the other one I have for you. It was so much fun, by the way, going through some of these old videos. Okay. Just one moment. I think this is episode 221, if I'm right on this one, 221. Yes. So this was Barb. Barb shared, she made these. These are so cute and it's quick and easy. So I'm just going to show you a glimpse of this to give you, get you a little inspired. If you want to watch the whole episode, this one is episode number... 221, 221. And by the way, I'm cracking up at some of your comments, <laughs> especially about when you're telling some stories. Suzanne said that uh, her mom used to have each person have a different um, <laughs> label for each gift. <laughs> and then they figured out how to go, go back and open the gifts. So I have to confess, I did do that once. I felt really guilty afterwards, but I did open a couple gifts and then rewrap them. I was probably, oh gosh, seventh grade, maybe eighth grade. Uh, but I did feel guilty and I never did it again. <laughs> I don't know what it is that we just cannot resist. But all right, let's go in and see what Barb did here. I think you're gonna enjoy this. And I took felt leaves. So Ooh. you can cut these on your scan and cut and I took different colors of felt leaves or you can get them wherever. And then I wrote or embroidered all the things people were thankful for all over these leaves and attached them to turn them into a table runner for Thanksgiving so that will last a whole lot longer. So let me show you exactly how I did that. That's a really great idea, by the way. I love this idea and we're getting this a whole week early so we can do this next week. <laughs> So I hooped up a water-soluble, lightweight, water soluble, adhesive-backed water-soluble stabilizer from Brother. And that's this. I would have done tearaway adhesive-backed, but I didn't have any. So this one is SA5906 if you're interested. So you can do the, either the adhesive-backed tearaway or the water-soluble. You and hoop you it said, you, part, you said SA956? I said SA5906. 5906. Got it. So you hoop it with the shiny side up. There is a shiny side and a not shiny side. And then you take a pin and you simply score the stabilizer and then you tear it away. That's all you have to do. And then this portion is sticky. All of this is sticky. Because how are you going to hoop that leaf in a way that you can actually um, embroider to the edges? You wouldn't be able to. So I'm just going to stick it on here real quick. And then we're going to move right over to our machine. So let's do that. That is a huge hoop, by the way. And yes, she has a lot of great fun projects for you. So keep asking your questions. We'll take a break and grab those shortly. But we'll keep watching what she's doing first. Okay, so we're just going to stick this down on this adhesive backed stabilizer. And then I'm going to go into embroidery where I'm going to add a word that was on. I did, I wrote down everything everybody was grateful for on all these pieces of paper. And I'm going to pick different fonts for different words. Um, one of my grandkids, college grandkids, was grateful for uh, sleep. 
<laughs> pretty funny. So I set the word and I'm going to now scan the lead. So there's my background scan, scan and okay. Oops, put my lever down and scan and okay. And it's now going to scan the leaf in the hoop and show it up on the screen. Now, why am I doing this instead of the projector? Because, um, I don't know why it's not moving. <laughs> That's because okay. we're live. <laughs> I'm going to turn it down and bring it back up because I don't have any idea why it didn't move. I'm using the background scan because I'm going to bring up all the words that are going to go on one leaf and then stitch them all out. And I want to visually see them on the screen so I can place them wherever I feel like is a good position for whichever words, because some are longer, some are shorter, some are um, bigger, some are smaller. That's, you know, the whole idea of getting these all on a leaf. So I have to go in and grab a word again. Mary Louise. Hey, uh, Barb, while you're bringing that word back up, Andrew. Mary Louise, I'm cracking up. That's a hula hoop. <laughs> that is a big hoop. It's a big hoop. And Patty, I agree with you. We should have a little library list of all the shows to refer back to. Do you remember how many great lessons there were on all the machines? Stellaire, Dream Machine, uh, SE2000, SE1900. There were so many great tutorials. And by the way, if you still have the Dream Machine, a lot of these, like this, using My Design Center is very similar. Of course, as the machines grow and you get upgrades, they have more perks. But My Design Center was way back then. So, uh, great idea. All right, we'll go back to Barb, see what's happening there. I just wants to know, and there was a few of these. Uh, did you actually cut that leaf on the scanning cut, or did you just purchase it at a craft store? I cut some leaves that I worked on, and I purchased others online. So gotcha. This is one that I did cut on Scan and Cut, and it's pretty thick, but you know you can do three millimeters. Wow, so you cut that one on the Scan and Cut. That's what a lot of people are asking, because we can see from our angle that that's pretty thick. Is that just foam, or what is that? No, it's a felt, craft felt. Wow, that's that looks like, that's really good looking felt. <laughs> that is, <laughs> and that's half of the battle. You want to make sure you get good quality products to work with. All right, so now it's moving, it's happier. So it's going to recognize this leaf and show up on my screen. And then I'll show you how I can move the word to where I want and also change the color of each word. And it's pretty simple. So I just want to let you see how I do this. So I'm going to move sleep up here and then I can play with that. I can move it around and, um, you know, do some... <laughs> Um, curving of it and all that kind of stuff, but let's change the oh, color. Danny, that was so hilarious. So if I go in here to my color palette and I select a color and I'm going to do, say, um, a green on that, then it's going to change the color of the first letter in the word. But if I select these three spools right here and change the color, it will change the whole word for you at one time, which is really valuable. So now for fun, I saved a whole leaf that I had done in my memory pocket. I'm going to bring that up so you can see. Uh, these are all the leaves I did. <laughs> and there it is. It's not lined up because it's not in the same position that I did before, but I can go ahead and move this. All right, I'm coming back real quick. I just saw a really good question that some of you, especially if you're getting a new machine, maybe Santa's dropping one off, or maybe you got one over, I don't know, the last few weeks, or maybe one's coming at some time. This is a great question from Kay. Uh, she has a bobbin. She Her machine came with two bobbins. She lost one. Don't worry, Kay. We've all probably done that, or I accidentally stepped on one, or it rolled underneath one of my cutting tables, and that means it's gone forever. <laughs> so uh, by the way, there is a specific size. They're not just the same. So you can't just go grab bobbin. bobbin. So go, depending on what machine you have, if you go to brothersews.com, punch in your machine, you can actually, it'll tell you what size bobbin your machine has. Now, many of the brother machines, their bobbins are interchangeable. Okay, but not all. Like the PQ1500 is a metal and some are plastic. And so you want to check what 
size goes with your machine. And you can probably find it at, you can find it at craft stores. Uh, you can find it at Brother Sews. Maybe go visit your brother dealer. They might even have a sale right now. So that was a great question. Hey, thanks for that. All right. I'll bring you back to Barb. And I have one more after this too. I saw someone saying it's not snowing so they can binge watch. Well, it's snowing here, but we can still binge watch for a while until Fashion Sewing Club, which is that too. Eastern. Oh, I've got a whole nother hour. <laughs> here you go. I do want to go into embroidery because then when I move it, it will move the entire thing. If I did not do um, embroidery, then it would just move one word at a time. So obviously I had the leaf shaped a different way, but you'll see the idea where they're all different fonts and different colors to make it really fun. Some of the things they were thankful for are weekends, grandpa food, um, gifts, cookies. You can tell I have grandkids. Warm baths and clean sheets, just a few of the things. So that, <laughs> that's I know, so people. cute. <laughs> so that's one of the um, projects. And I will show you the finished product when we're done, I promise. But I need to delete that scan. So I went to my um, settings pages. And on page 10, if I don't stitch it out, that's where I delete it. Okay. And now it's gone. And I'll just go out of here. The second project I did for the Thanksgiving table was place cards. I like to place my people at the table where I want to, especially because some grandkids can't sit next to other grandkids without causing trouble, if you know what I mean. So <laughs> I took leaves and I put them on a hoop, again, with the same stabilizer. And yes, you did see some pins in there. And I will talk about that. So literally, I just went to the craft store and found fall leaves and I popped them off and put them on my hoop. They're not flat, so that's why there's some pins in there. So all I have to do for this one is put a name in because these are going to be place cards. So I'm just putting in my daughter's name and set. And, and this is the same concept. And again, I can change that color. So let's go in here. And this time, let's choose this the first time. And I'm going to do a bright yellow, I think. I can always change it again. And now I need to scan this background. Again, why am I scanning instead of doing the projector? Because I'm going to add all the names and stitch this whole hoop out at one time. And I'll show you next what the deal is with the pins. You want to make sure that you're not um, too close, that your embroidered foot is raised enough to go over these because they're not flat. Um, and then I need to just move page onto whatever leaf I want and I can do whatever I want with that. But to make sure I'm not sewing over a pin very easily, I'm just going to magnify this. I can see my pin is over here and over there and over there. I'm not near the middle of my um, leaf. So I will show you a finished table setting with these also in just a minute. So again, remember how to erase this background since I didn't stitch it. We go to page 10 of our settings and we say delete and okay. You know, so Barb, I have to, I just have to say by you showing that, how to delete that, I can't even tell you how many emails I get from people or messages that how do I get that background off my page? And I can never remember what page it's on. Now I'll remember 10, but she showed that twice now. So that's a great, great, great tip. Thanks. And that's kind of why I did that. So the <laughs> next thing I did, uh, we're moving on to Christmas, is these are foam that you can cut out on your scan and cut and decorate any way you want to. And you'll notice that these are all plain. This time, I'm going to scan this, but in my design center as an image. So here's my scan key, and this is an image, and scan and OK. Why did I change to my design center? Because I want to be able to draw on top of these to add the embellishments that we're going to do. So take a look at that tree. Oh. Add, yep. I added the garland and the ornaments, and this one I put a teddy bear on it. And here I have a flower, and then I did the toe and the heel. This one got a heart. All of these are stamps out of my design center. Um, wow. And this is drawing. So I'm going to show you that how. That is I super, super, super cute. So do you have a pen? I'll tell you, this is episode number 
221. So if you go to Brother So's YouTube channel, I can actually put a link. Hold on, I'll grab a link for you on this. I can click share. I'll copy this and I will put this link in the comments here. Um, and I'll put Barb's gifts. Because this goes on and on and on, and it is a great episode. And if you have my design center, you're really going to love to watch. Maybe you can hit pause and go through, but I had to bring that up. So I've got one more short one for you. And I see all of you talking about the storm. Yes, that's why I'm here. <laughs> it is snowing out. It's supposed to turn to snow. Uh, I don't know what path. I'm in Illinois right now. Uh, winds in Michigan, so we're going to be meeting up, but we're supposed to get ice here and a ton of snow there. And I see some of you saying that you're going to go grab your last minute shopping. I agree. You better hurry up and do it because it's supposed to get nasty. So I think I'll be binge watching with all of you tonight. So on the brother shows, but I got one more for you. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop it in. I saw somebody asking about the masterclass, the Luminaire masterclass. Uh, why don't you email me? Because if you had the XP2 last year, it should have come with your machine. And now you can actually buy the class from your dealer. So anybody can buy the class from the dealer now, which is really great. But you can email me too, info at AngelaWolf.com if you want that. So, all right, I've got one more for you. And we'll, we'll watch just a little bit of it to give you some inspiration and keep your comments rolling in. I love, Arnell's like, I can't tell what's real and what's old. Well, that's the whole point. That's why it's so much fun. All right, so let me get this next one. You can hear the wind chimes outside, by the way. My mom has some gorgeous wind chimes here and they're very noisy, but, <laughs> oh, Doris, it's gonna be 80 there. Okay, I need to go where you are, California. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> all right, uh, one more for you. Uh, we could do this all day, but I'm just gonna show you briefly because then you can go to the Brother So's page and binge watch yourself. Okay, hold on one sec. Here it is. I think this one is episode 229. If I got that right. 229. I think this is it. Let's see who's on this show. All right. Take it away. And what you're making for this now, too. But why don't we start with Kathy Stipe? Sounds good. I'm going to move to my machine camera and we're going to create this little mug rug in my design center. And Angela will do a sheen, uh, screen share of the instructions after I'm complete with it. That sounds good. So sounds let me good. change well, cameras. And I'll take this little banner down so it doesn't cut off all of our heads. This is going to be so exciting. <laughs> so what we're going to be using today, we're using the Luminaire. You could use another embroidery machine that Brother has, sewing machine. We've got the Ruffler Foot coming up. We've got the Scan and Cut. So many Brother products. This is going to be awesome. All right. We can see you great. Okay. So we're going to start out in my design center. So let me tell you the materials that you're going to need. I've made this so that it will fit a five by seven hoop. So you'll need a thin batting to fit your five by seven hoop. You're going to need three cuts of fabric that measure eight and a half inches by six inches. You're going to need one for the front. You're going to need two that are folded and pressed right sides um, or wrong sides together so that they measure four and a half by six inches. Um, actually four and a quarter. I guess I didn't pay attention to my <laughs> instructions, but you need to pay attention when you're cutting your fabric, if you're using a directional fabric. And you can ask me how I know that. So we're gonna be building this design in layers. So think about if you have ever purchased any of the in the hoop designs, they're all different layers. And so one layer needs to stitch before the next. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my design center and I'm gonna go into the shapes or stamps icon. And in this icon, I have two different open shape categories. I mean, closed shape categories, open shape. These are for if 
this icon is for if I created my own custom shape. Then I have my hoops. So I'm going to select my five by seven hoop so that I have a reference on my screen of how big to make my mug rug. So I'm going to go back into shapes again, and I prefer this rectangle with the rounded corners. You may prefer to use a square and have um, straight corners, but this is my favorite. So we're choosing that. And the first thing I need to do is rotate it. And I know that it is a little bit bigger than my hoop. So I'm going to go to size and I'm going to size it down to approximately 4.85 by 6.80. <laughs> okay, so I just learned. And then I'm going to say, okay. I'm so not used to having a phone, like an actual phone phone. For the outline. <laughs> so yes, that was a phone. I, I just didn't even, <laughs> I'm just giggling because I don't even have one of those. I just use a cell phone. So I was like, where is that coming from? <laughs> Sorry about that. So my sister says hi to everyone. All right, so this episode, she goes on and shows, walks you through so much of my design center. I'm going to bring up just a little bit more of this uh, just to make sure that if you have a question. Wine. I want to choose just the running stitch and I'm going to pick a green and I'm going to touch my flood fill and touch that line. So this is the stitch that's going to attach your fabric to the batting that you have hooped. So I'm going to touch next. And I'm going to leave the settings at default and touch set and then OK. Now I'm going to go back to add. <laughs> and I should have saved that to the machine memory, but I've done you. it once before. So I'm going it back. Be. OK, I can't control that. It's a clock here, OK? <laughs> but. Um, it's all entertaining. So anyways, that is a great episode. There are a ton of different things on there of different guests that I think you might enjoy. <laughs> oh my gosh. When, if you're watching, I know you are laughing because every time this clock goes off every hour of all day long and all night long, <laughs> you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Okay. <laughs> I know. So I did see that you had a couple questions. Oh, yes. <laughs> Michelle, this is episode 229. Here, I'll put a link in it for you real quick. Because there's a lot more. Actually, uh, she goes on and then there's, uh, do you remember this part? I know you'll remember this. The ruffler foot. Okay, hold on. I'll bring it up. I'll get the link for you, though, while, while you're watching. This part's really cool. This is episode 229. <laughs> I know I'm laughing. Have it set so that the needle is going to go, um, make sure your needle is going to go through the hole on the foot. And I have my stitch length set at 2.0. I would suggest taking a 10 inch piece of fabric after you've got your ruffler foot <laughs> set and run it through and then measure what your fabric uh, comes out as after it puts the ruffles. And that will uh, help you to know how uh, long to cut your fabric to start with. So I'm gonna take my fabric and I have this um, little uh, plastic ruler I like to use and it really makes it easy to attach or insert my fabric because you have to insert the fabric in, into the ruffler foot. So by putting the little plastic ruler in, I can push this to the back of my foot and then I can just pull the, um, plastic ruler out. The reason I do that is I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there are some little teeth that hold the fabric in place and it's really hard to pull the fabric or adjust the fabric with those teeth without the plastic over the top. So now I've got it and I've got my um, fabric lined up um, over to the right edge of this metal plate. 
I'm trying to do this so that you can see. And I am just going to start stitching. And I do recommend stitching slowly so that you're not, let the machine do the work. Don't, don't try to force it. And if the faster you stitch, I found that my ruffles don't tend to be so even. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my foot down and let the machine do its thing. All right. And you can see that every six stitches, it's taking a time. That was such a cool episode. So some of you are asking, what episode is that? Uh, this is episode 229. 229. So I will bring a link up here real quick for you. For those that want to just click on it. Uh, this has been so much fun. All right. Hold on one second. I'll, I'll give you a list of all the three that these were three different episodes during the holidays, last minute gift ideas. This is the link right now. So by the way, when you want to go see these, I, these videos, it's a little bit of a different place. So it gets, when you're on YouTube, go to, go to YouTube, go to brother. So you can also watch it on Facebook, but I think uh, YouTube, you can put it on your big screen. You can make it a big screen that YouTube is my favorite for watching binge watching these. So when you go to brother, so's YouTube page, there's a whole batch of videos and you're like, I don't see any at your side virtually. You have to scroll over. I think three, there'll be videos look under live. And then you go to live and there are tons of videos, tons, like hundreds. <laughs> but anyways, these are, so these are the episodes we just went through. Um, 229 was the last one. 221 was the one with Barb making those adorable little ornaments and signatures. And 128 was the whole group of everyone with Cindy's dog that kicked it off. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Patty, you know, those are great. And, you know, some of you said, hey, I've got a machine. I don't know how to use it. Uh, even if you don't have the exact machine that we're using, a lot of the brother machines are very similar, especially when it comes to my design center. So you can benefit from all of these. I would just set up your laptop or, or tablet or whatever, or put it on your TV right next to your sewing machine. You can hit pause, go through it, and all of those. So I enjoyed all the laughs when the clock went off. I'm going to have a really good laugh with my mother later on because that's pretty funny. So um, I did see a couple questions about you have to use a stylus on here on when you're using my design center. No, you do not. You can use your finger. I use my finger all the time. But the new stylus that came with the Luminaire 3 is really nice. It's really precise. A plus. <laughs> Don't lose that one. <laughs> it's a brother one. And then I saw somebody saying, if I have a quilting machine, can I embroider on it? The only way you can embroider like they're showing here is if your machine has embroidery. It would come with a hoop. Um, so you have to have a sewing and embroidery machine to do the embroidery or just an embroidery by itself machine. There are a lot of different options. So uh, I'm so excited I was able to hang out with you all today. I was a little concerned with the weather, but we made it. The internet stayed really well for us so we could get this. And uh, I love going back to the old days and looking at, because these are great episodes. So go back, binge watch. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. I hope you're all safe through this crazy weather that's hitting pretty much everyone of some sort, except for all my dear friends in Southern California where it's 90. A little jealous about that. But anyways, happy holidays, happy Hanukkah, whatever you're celebrating, or if you're not, just enjoy your weekend. And again, next weekend's New Year's, which we are all celebrating. So I'd love to see your gifts. Don't forget, look above. Use hashtag brother sews, brother scan and cut. They love to see what you're working on. And you know what? They might even feature you on one of their social, social pages. So Fashion Sewing Club, I will see you in about 50 minutes for our annual Christmas, pre Christmas gift. Get some coffee, everyone. Say hi. Say, let us know what you're working on. I'm cracking up. I'm just waiting for the clock to go off again. Clovis. Merry Christmas to all of you, all of you. I can see you all saying goodbye. Thank you, thank you. And yes, this was a lot of fun. And if there's a topic you want brother to cover one of these days, just leave it below. We'll see it. And we, maybe we can put that in a new episode coming up in 2023. But in the meantime, Tuesday, Nephi is going to be joining us. Nephi Garcia, he's going to be showing how to use a scan and cut to embellish New Year's Eve dresses. 
You're not going to want to miss that one. So until then, have a great weekend. Merry Christmas, and I will see you on Tuesday.